Hey friends, Juan here, welcome back to a very special video because if you look at the subscriber count, you will have seen that we officially surpassed 8,000 subscribers and that is just freaking awesome, humbling, amazing because whether we're talking about 100, 500, 1,000, whatever, it's just people all over the world connecting through this very small channel. And in a time where a lot of people are talking about the PS5, computer upgrades, the series consoles, we go back to the PS3, the 360, the Wii U, and a lot of people tell me, hey, uh, I subscribe to your channel, and now I have like 50 PS3 games where before maybe I had one or two, or maybe actually dusted off my old console and, and connected with it, because as we get older, that doesn't mean we have to necessarily upgrade. But I thought, why not celebrate with something very uh, cool, laid back, and it's gonna be just grabbing my phone and showing you my game room setup from the shelf to everything in the back to my computer setup I got some brand new monitors and a couple of things and as I showcase my uh, game room here I'm also going to be reviewing that product right there which is the Movo double mic it doesn't have one microphone people it's got two of them one in the front and one in the back and that's pretty awesome because right now I'm using the frontal one but you can notice that as I'm talking now, the quality maybe took a dip and it's because it's still only showcasing or using that front one. But get this, if you wanted to use both microphones or the one in the back only, all you gotta do is head over to the top. You'll see there's two different uh, indicators. One of them is to highlight if you're connecting this to a camera or a smartphone. But because I have it connected to a recorder, I gotta label it as a camera. If not, it's like a smartphone, this is an iPhone, so for this you would have to use one of those uh, lightning uh, cables. Now, just to make sure you get an idea of what all three sound options are like, I put the microphone here with this very elaborate setup, which really is just the Latin blanket we used to take naps. Yeah, that's YouTube in 2021, apparently. So right now you're listening to me using the frontal mic. When we go over to the back, it should not sound nearly as clear, but now we are gonna switch over to the back microphone officially. And just like that, did not even take two seconds. We are now using this one, and now you can compare. Here's the back one, here's the front one. The front part should be noticeably lower. Now, I should still sound lower in the back one, and it's because after doing a little bit of research, it does seem like they lower the decibels in the back microphone by default. That's actually pretty smart because if you have this uh, microphone on top of a camera, keep in mind the front one will be there, but the back microphone is going to be very close to you. So they do that, I'm assuming, to avoid any popping of the sound. But then I'm going to quickly show you the uh, middle option, which is both microphones on. And just like that, we have the back microphone on as well as the front one. It's worth mentioning, I have a pretty small space, so things like this will introduce a little bit of reverb because keep in mind, both microphones are picking you up. And for context, I'm not directly to its front. These are super cardioid pattern microphones, so they are very much directional. So think about the fact that the closer you get to the front of the microphone, the better the quality will be. So they did send it for the purpose of review, but nobody's reviewing my actual contents. All of those uh, opinions that I talk about here are my own, but you wanna get to the game stuff, right? So make sure to like, subscribe. Once again, thank you for the 8K subs, and let us begin the game room tour. And for context, right now, you are listening to me using the built-in iPhone microphone, and as we turn to the left, this is now the Movo double mic. There should be a noticeable quality difference. I'm using the back part of the microphone and then towards the end of the video, I'll be using the frontal one just so you get that nice comparison of the quality of both. I don't have both sides on right now, which is very important because otherwise you're gonna get some rebound. If I had this microphone on, it would rebound, it would get, it would get a, a little bit of that reverb and we definitely don't want that. So. When talking about the game collection, let us zoom in right there. I am using my iPhone 12 Pro Max for this video. I just thought it'd be a lot easier. As you can see at the top, the struggle is real as far as we don't have enough space for all the games in our collection. But when we go up here, a lot of these do not actually have the uh, cartridges. 
a great friend of mine gave me most of these. You see there's like a Pokemon White version 2, but that doesn't have the cartridge. So maybe over time, I'll try to build that up. PS4 games, same thing. A lot of friends that have given me copies or uh, cheap pickups and things like that. I haven't touched the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch immediately for months. Life has been very hectic, so it's really been all about Xbox 360 and PS3 for me right now. And as you can see, I do have a fair share of limited run games because my wife and I, we don't really buy a lot of these, but for the games that we do like, like Celeste, a Bloodstained, you know, games like that, we like having that physical copy. Some of these games, you'll notice, are still shrink-wrapped, and it's because maybe I got fed up and tired of waiting for the physical copy, and I ended up just buying the uh, digital one. When we go over to the right, you see the majority of our PS1 games. You'll see there's a lot of uh, GRPGs, wrestling, demo discs. There's a uh, Legend of Ligaya. I love that game. Obviously, Final Fantasy VIII. I've talked about how that game really helped me overcome depression. So there's a video available on the channel about that. And if we get Waluigi to Waluigi, go here. Okay. 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 So when we go here. We have two of my favorite games of all time, that being uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. Damn it, this game is just stupidly amazing. And then Star Ocean, the second story. I, I'm not a fan of the box art. I've talked about that in its own video, but I love those games. In the back, we have uh, pretty much all of our Wii U games. Many of you subscribe because of my Wii U content, but man... Wii U game collecting, the prices went up there. I got a lot of these games for five, ten dollars Some of them brand new, and now you'd be lucky to get them for like 15 So I'm hoping that over time, prices do go down, but for, for the moment, I'm pretty much done collecting for the Wii U. But I am collecting for the Wii, because those games are still super cheap. A lot of these, I want to say maybe 70% of the collection, these games have cost anywhere between five to eight dollars. So don't forget that Wii U is fully backwards compatible with Wii and you get the added HDMI option. So there's a couple of great games here. Still want to play Dead Space Extraction. So that's a spin-off game. I've talked about Batman the Brave and the Bold in its own video. That game is amazing. It's developed by Way Forward, the same people that worked on the Shantae games. Uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns, I would love to see that game get a Switch port because even though it's not super annoying, I am not a big fan of the motion controls that sometimes you got to use. Ghost Squad is a really good light gun game. As you can see, other games I've still yet to play, but I buy games that the question is, do you buy games to not play them? No. What I actually like to do is, you'll see a theme with some of the games. There's a lot of first person shooters, right? So. I have times of the year where I'll be really into a particular genre, so that's why I buy games like that. Uh, there's other games like uh, Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition, can't wait to play that one. I have these two games here because they didn't fit up there, and well, I just can't see this be all empty. And then we have more games back there, including obviously some wrestling games, even though they suck. They are awful on the Wii, but you know, I'm a, I'm a massive wrestling fan, so that's why I wanted to have those. And now we really start with the uh, main event. Waluigi, okay, you gotta go up now. You gotta go up, okay? Okay. So now this is uh, the PlayStation 2 section. I've talked about a couple of these games and uh, in a lighter note, I do wanna get into more PlayStation 2 coverage just because I love the console so much. But just talking about some uh, games that really pop into my head. You know, Def Jam and Dead is an unbelievable game. Same thing with Final Fantasy 10 and 12. You know, Grand Theft Auto 3 actually have a full video about that on the channel. Ico, it's a pretty good version, but I think the PS3 HD one is definitely the way to go. I love me the, the Lord of the Rings games. Rumble Roses, super underrated wrestling game. It's made using the same engine as uh, SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain. It is a little bit unique as far as the tone, but it is what it is. And then, uh, no, not Mummy. There we go. This is one game that I... No! Sting fell! Okay, damn it. So this is one game that I didn't even know existed. This MotorStorm game came out around the same time as Pacific Rift on the PS3. And I actually got this new for $10. And just so you see that I do play games, notice it's not shrink wrap. That's because 
I buy games to play them. And yeah, because there's going to be somebody asking, this is totally just like Costco uh, meal snack bars. I use the empty boxes to have this uh, two floor shelf thing. Leave me alone. It works. I spray painted one of these. I got lazy halfway through. And then moving over here, this is a surprisingly good game. Star Wars uh, Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. The movie itself, not the best, but the game is a damn good hack and slash. And it's like super cheap. I got this for four fifty or something like that. X Men Legends. I'm happy to get uh, X Men Legends Two. I did not have that. You know, I love me some jam packed demo discs. So there's that. Uh, we have a large array of wrestling games. Not all of them are here. I believe I'm missing the copy. Yep, let's give me a second here. We gotta have a conversation, people. Does anybody know where my disc for SmackDown vs. Raw 2006 is? I don't know where it is. I've gone through most of the cases in my collection, and I can't find it, and I'm getting kind of desperate, people, so help me out. Where is it? So that's been most of my PS2 collection. Gonna just leave this here for a second in case there's any particular game you would like me to talk about in a future video or something, uh, please let me know because anything about uh, PS2, PS3, and Xbox 360, that's really what I'm going to be focusing on for the future of the channel for the time being, so here's your chance to drop any suggestions. And then going to PS3, a lot of these games are not necessarily ones that I bought when my wife and I got married, our PS3 and 360 collections became one, right? So that's why you'll see a lot of games like Assassin's Creed. I've still yet to play any of these. I do love Author's Wrath. That game is amazing. Beyond Two Souls and Blade Storm. Uh, these are games a great friend has uh, sent me. Shout out to Dark One. Getting to the bottom. Let us open this over here. This is actually a modified 2DS with a built-in capture card. I've not done anything with this on the main channel. I have uh, just recorded some footage, but I've never really led, it's never led to an, any video yet. I'm still looking for some of that inspiration, but this is actually pretty expensive though, because you can no longer buy that. So very excited to have at the effect uh, that I have that. Looking over here, we have a, a good chunk of my PS3 games right now. I'm almost done with Folklore, so that will be a full length review right now on the channel. I got, I got my good and, and not so good things to say about that game. In a burnout paradise, you got the Call of Duties, obviously. These games right here, it's... Look, you've seen my shelf. There's not enough space for everything, so these are kind of just there. <laughs> I need to move them somewhere else. And I do have more games. We do have games in our game room, but it's like maybe 20, 30 more games, so not really worth going over there. I almost fell. We have a Haze. Uh, that's made by the people that made Time Splitter, so I've not played it yet, but I bought it because I would like to give a review. It'll probably be a negative video, just because people crap on that game nonstop. If you notice, I tend to focus on positive videos, but sometimes you gotta talk about the junk, and it's pretty fun, but not the junk in the trunk. Why did I say that? I don't know. Infamous 2, it's uh, another one of those games that I can't wait to play. And uh, same thing with Killzone, the Jack and Daxter collection. A lot of really good stuff there. When we get to the bottom, give me a second here. I'm, I'm showing my age here. Uh, obviously, even more wrestling games. Plenty of them. A Ratchet and Clank Tools of Destruction. The only physical Ratchet and Clank game that I have for uh, PS3. Although I have all of the games digitally. Because uh, they're pretty cheap on, on PS. And I have a video talking about the best way to get most of those. And then over here, I I do have the original MotorStorm. I don't have it here, and I don't know why. I actually have three copies of that. And I'm not even joking, because people just keep giving me free copies of that game. I don't need to... I, am I going to be like the Scott the Waz? You know, he collects like one particular game. Is MotorStorm going to be it for me? I mean, I wouldn't complain about it. You'll see here, I have quite a few um, VR games. I'm still struggling with some problems with... The VR, uh, the move controllers, they're not holding a charge, and I've tried over five different cables, so any assistance with that would be very much appreciated. Then, we don't want to have the entire video just be the game shelf, so let's gloss over some of the more additional things. Here we have uh, OG Xbox 360, and then somewhere over here, 
we do have Xbox One and this is the one console that I really am fighting myself now to appreciate because I got a 360 once my PS3 broke down but even then it really was just like my wrestling slash uh, Gears of War machine so now I'm really starting to dedicate time to games that I've learned about recently like Blur, you know, Born Conspiracy. I've I've played this uh, X-Men official game based on the movies. This was actually one of my wife's copies. Midnight Club Los Angeles. That game is like damn good. I've really been enjoying it. And then here we have the Prince of Persia trilogy. Here we have a bag from CVS and my cleaning supplies. I love to keep everything clean, so uh, I like to just have that in the corner of my room here. Uh, Tony Hawk's Underground 1 and 2, I love those games. 50 Cent Blood in the Sand, that game is amazing. And then just sort of looking here at the bottom, even more PS4 games. And a lot of that has gone unplayed because it's either games that my wife got over time, that I got and I never really played. We have more pickups, people. So these are a lot of games that I've gotten in maybe the last month or so, Quantum of Solace, Pocket Bike Racer. I do want to make a video about those uh, Burger King video games, so I'm looking forward to that. Here's a Nitro Wrestling book I still got to finish reading. Some gaming magazines. The Ear Purifier I always talk about. My Apido Arcade Stick. Uh, the Oculus Quest 2. This has actually been the thing I've been playing the most. I use the Oculus Quest 2 right here. So... Whenever I'm talking about VR, just assume this is where I'm really hanging out. It's a nice and just comfortable area. And I really do enjoy just uh, hanging out here. Uh, I've talked about this before. I actually got this done. It was an artist from New York. Shout out to Ramon Triff, who reached out to me because he enjoyed my content and asked me, hey, would you like uh, a custom piece to be made? And let me actually zoom so you can see even more detail. This is El Morro in uh, Puerto Rico. Obviously this is me back from when I was still referring, uh, referring to the channel as Epic JC. We have some Final Fantasy Tactics, Star Ocean, Final Fantasy again, uh, The Undertaker. We have some Pokemon references and just the fact that I would like to eventually travel the whole world and that's right there in the background with purple and blue being some of my favorite colors so that's awesome. And yeah, I can't stress enough, I am a big wrestling fan. This is another custom art piece that was made specifically for me back in 2013 about Eddie Guerrero Latino Heat, as uh, Jerry the King Lawler would say. I promised myself that I would keep this updated. I literally put these and I never changed them once. This is an area of my game room, studio, whatever, that I would like to change because here I literally just have like scrap cables that can easily go anywhere else. I never sit here. I don't really have people over, especially, you know, with the pandemic and stuff. So it's kind of just taking space. And when you go over here, you kind of get a feel of what I would like to do eventually. So here's where I have most of my game controllers. Here I have a uh, Wii U, Pro, 360, Xbox One, PS4. Here I have just more scrap cables, even more controllers, and uh, 8 bit dough and all that stuff, and more at the bottom. What I would like is to have a table that has multiple drawers, but that it, it's not as deep, so I want to chop it off to like this length, and have it be wider, so that way I can really have a most, much nicer streamlined uh, gaming setup, because this is where I hang out, like this is not... Uh, a recording studio. I record videos here, but this is where I spent most of my time whenever I'm in the house, right? So I want this to be as functional and as comfortable as possible. And this is one of the bigger changes that I've made recently. And this actually cost me nothing. I just modified an IKEA shelf. And by modified, I mean I just cut the back. And this is where I have my consoles right now. You've seen some of this in B roll in my recent uh, reviews and all that stuff, but I have the Wii U, the PS2, the PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and then the router is right down there at the bottom. Uh, I need to eventually add more shelving space to this. The good thing is that you can get these shelves uh, separately, but we're, o we're waiting for a new IKEA store to open up in Puerto Rico so I can just buy those. So the idea is that I can have the Nintendo consoles, PlayStation, 
you know, my Xbox One. I still don't have a PS5 or a series because I really don't have a need for that. Most of the stuff that I'd like to play, even outside channel coverage, is these consoles, right? So there's really no need for that. And I have all of this plugged in in the back of this unit. I have an HDMI uh, splitter and switch wrap both back there, and that goes over here. That gets taken over to my computer, and then the good thing is I'm still doing the wiring because these monitors are brand new. They don't even have one week here as of the recording of this video. Uh, these are both 27-inch uh, 2K monitors that do 165 hertz. And I didn't want to do 4K because I really have no need for it. I mean, for crying out loud, I'm a PS3 channel. And even for PC gaming, I always prioritize a frame rate over anything else like resolution. So I can play games at 2K just fine. So I have these monitors and people having a vertical monitor for editing is amazing because on that one is where I'll turn on Premiere or anything. But here I can look at my folders for videos, clips, notes, and anything like that. This has seriously just changed everything about my setup. By the way, for a lot of things that I'm talking about equipment-wise, I will try to have most of these in the description of the video, but there's a lot, right? So I may be overlooking something. And going back to the cables, because I know somebody's going to comment on that. I know this is ugly AF right now. As I mentioned, I just got these and like the uh, power cable is too short so I need to measure everything so I can buy like proper HDMI cables, the power strips and everything so it looks nice and, sm and uh, you know neat and smooth. But right now it's pretty much just functional, not necessarily a visual thing. Uh, this is my, ca uh, my Canon, my Panasonic Lumix G85. I've had this camera since 19, 19, man, I travel back in time. I've had this since 2018. 2018 is what I'm talking about. And this has traveled with me in many states. My Easter Island video, which is one of my most popular videos on the channel, was recorded with that. Every video that you see that I work on, the famous, hey everybody, Juan here, welcome back. All of that is recorded with that. And then here, because I'm also doing some uh, uh, Spanish language food vlogs and all that, I actually just clip my iPhone right over there uh, for vertical video and sometimes I'll do simultaneous recording with horizontal video here and then vertical over there. This slide is excellent because it's battery powered but obviously I keep it connected whenever I can. The benefit is that when I do non-gaming stuff or stuff outside my home here I can take this and I don't have to worry about that. And power goes out all the time in Puerto Rico so I often actually use that as a backup and then here is my computer it's got a 2070 super it's got a bunch of stuff that i clearly don't remember i have a video about that so i'll link to that at the end of this video because i just suck at explaining all of that but i freaking love the damn thing it gets the job done it hasn't struggled once with me you know so i'm happy uh, this is a light that i got on amazon as well as this one that is right down there usually i'll stick a tripod right down here and that's where you'll sometimes see my backlight you know you'll get a little bit this is like a nice tone nice theme right so those two i got for like less than 40 bucks uh little things that i have are the uh, stream deck i've had this for multiple years i have a speaker system but I also have another, this is literally $20, this was 20 bucks, it is awful, it has no bass, but for monitoring basic audio, like uh, uh, this, this is hooked up to this monitor and this one's hooked up to this one, so I can have a PlayStation 3 here, for example, and I can listen to the gameplay, but I can still listen to whatever's going on in my computer for monitoring purposes or anything else, so that's why I have like multiple different sources. And part of this slide I got creative, it hasn't fallen yet, and it's been months, so knock on really cheap Ikea wood here that it doesn't fall down. But I'm trying to have as uh, the least amount of things possible in my setup here. I want to get rid of this, but the problem is the USB cable that powers it is way too short. Usually, I only put that up there when I'm recording, and then I'll just take that out, right? And then maybe the last thing, and... This is the stuff that nobody ever really gets to see. Uh, this used to be the closet, right? So let me show you this. This used to be the closet in the small room. 
So by taking it out, I still kept the shelf because that way, if I need batteries that's up there, anything tied to production, it's just within arm's reach. I'm not the tallest guy, so sometimes I'll need my chair here and uh, knock on wood that I haven't fallen there, but that may happen eventually. And then when we go over here, you'll see the Super Nintendo Classic, the uh, Genesis Mini, some additional controllers, audio equipment for stuff that I do outside gaming, uh, batteries and all that sort of stuff, you know, additional cables for uh, specific consoles, you can see that. And uh, the, the last thing, and I just want to give a plug and shout out to one of my recent videos, is these things right here, and come on man, you, you gotta focus. It's not, I think I accidentally turned on the lock on. Whatever, these things help have multiple controls work on one console. And it's things like this that uh, really motivate me to have stuff like that because by using these dongles, I've really switched my gaming setup to only using like maybe what? Um, I wanna say three to four controllers because now I use my PS4 controller for the PlayStation 2 as well as the PlayStation 4. And that friends has been my game room tour. As I talked about throughout the video, I'm still thinking about a lot of changes that I would like to make, and I think that applies to anybody or anything, whether we're talking about a car or a home. You can you can buy a home, you can fully remodel it, and then the day after you, th you think to yourself, oh, but, but I want to do this next, and I want to do that next. So that's why sometimes I'll say I want to do something here, and it'll be months before it happens, and it's just because I'm thinking long term, right? As I mentioned, I would love to change this shelf and maybe place it, you know, across, so that way I can place some stuff here. In one of our other rooms, uh, we have the modified arcade one-up machine, and we would like to put uh, to its side a virtual pinball machine, eventually something like DDR, or uh, we saw like some cheap ski ball machines or something. We just like to make people smile whenever we have uh, visitors coming over. So if there's anything that I talked about here briefly, because otherwise we, this could have easily been just a one-hour video on a specific console or something, right? Uh, you know, game collection. But if there's anything you would like me to talk about in more detail, yeah, just drop that in the comments. And for context regarding the microphone, right now I am using the front-facing microphone. I'm using it in a more of a shotgun microphone setup, which is actually something that I've uh, used it a lot for in uh, work. Uh, a lot of production work that I do outside this channel I've done over eight recording sessions already with that microphone, and when I have uh, people hear it back, you know, play it back, they'll ask me, like, how much was that microphone? And they'll see my tiny ass setup here. Like, this is my setup. This is a $100 recorder with a less than $70 microphone, right? And it sometimes lets you know that you gotta be very creative because I'm subscribed to a lot of YouTube channels that maybe their video and audio quality is not the best, but to me, as long as you're able to hear somebody clearly, that to me is like great, right? Some people use iPhones, like iPhone cameras are amazing. I have a, a food Instagram page, 100% of what I do is on my phone. I used to use this camera and then I realized this is a lot easier to just travel with and all that stuff. So having something like this really does help because sometimes, and I'll just be real, you know, with the whole pandemic and working from home, even though for the most part, I'm not working from home anymore, I'll get home and I had a great idea in the car, right? Oh, I wanna talk about this gaming topic or something, but then I'll get home, I'll eat, I'll shower, and then I'll sit here and think to myself, I, th I think I lost the momentum. So having some kind of setup where I can think about a topic, but record it at that very moment is very convenient. And sometimes like, I'm in Puerto Rico, we have a ton of beautiful places and locations, so I'm hoping that throughout the year, and even next year specifically, I can talk about gaming, but I, I don't need to show you my game collection to be like, oh, Juan's a gamer, because he's got PS2 games in the background. I can be in a damn forest and still be a gamer. Like, not having my gaming background doesn't make me any more or less of a gamer. I remember one time, this is just me going off the rails here. One time, you know, my Xbox games are at the bottom, but it's just because it's kind of what it was. I didn't have any intention. And somebody commented, you know, just saying the the pecking order that I had for my consoles. And I'm like, 
No, it's kind of just like that's my shelf and that's what was left and that's where I put it. That was kind of it. And it's conversations like this that I really do love having. Uh, does it get as many views as people talking smack about PS3 or Series X consoles and all that? No, but that's not what I'm about. And if you've been subscribed and you help me get to 8,000 subs, you know that's not what I'm all about. I truly am just about chatting with people, getting to know one another, talking about the games that I am playing. If I'm not playing something, I'm not just going to talk about it here for the sake of, hey, I got to produce content. I'm, I'm not an influencer, not a content creator. I am a dude that plays games, that records on a microphone and a video camera and puts it out and hopefully people enjoy it. That's pretty much who I am. It's a long ass title, but you can just call me a uh, player Juan. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, uh, give me that thumbs up. And without question, I would absolutely recommend uh, getting this Movo double mic. At no point during this video did I uh, apply noise reduction or anything like that. Maybe I raised or lowered the volume if I heard me talking a little bit low during editing, but I wanted you to get the raw experience, hence why there's not a lot of like music or something in the background. So that's without noise removal. Imagine the quality that you're listening to right now with that. So if you are interested in grabbing yourself one of these microphones, absolutely go down to the description of the video for a link to this one and other products that I've talked about previously. So without further ado, thank you for watching, supporting, and take care, everybody.